If you've spent any time studying trigonometry, you've probably come across these very intimidating and specific special triangles. If your teacher's nice, you might get a formula sheet with the special triangles on them, but at the very worst, you could be asked to memorize these and somehow still know how to use them. In this video, I'm going to show you an insane trick to completely avoid using these special triangles, and all you need is your hand. Let's check it out. In trigonometry, we have two special triangles that can be a little bit tricky to remember, but they're super important and you really need to know how to use them to do some more advanced trigonometry. So sometimes when you're doing trigonometry problems, you'll be asked to write the exact value of the sine, cos, or tan of one of these angles. And exact value essentially just means no decimals. So for example, I could be asked to find the sine of 45 degrees, and I could be asked to write that in exact form. Now, you could just go grab your calculator, but the idea is that you should be able to come up with this exact value without a calculator or with any technology. And you can do that using these special triangles if you can remember them. So let's say that I had this triangle in front of me. I can find the sine of 45 pretty easily. I know that sine is just the opposite over hypotenuse. So if I look at that 45 degree angle, the opposite should be one and the hypotenuse should be root two. So it makes sense that the sine of 45 degrees is just one over root two. And so you can see that there's no decimals here. That is an exact answer. And that's something you're going to see come up over and over again for these angles. So it's a good idea to know how to use these special triangles. But if you're anything like me and you have a hard time remembering stuff that kind of seems like it's like arbitrarily specific, I'm going to show you an insanely neat trick that you can use to calculate the sine of 45, for example, using just your hand. All right, so let's say you wanted to find the sine of 45 degrees, but you couldn't remember these special triangles. What you're going to do is you're going to take your left hand and you're going to hold it up. Now, this process should work using your left or right, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to use our left hand. What you're going to do is you're going to label your fingers from left to right, starting at zero, and you're going to work your way up through all of the angles on your special triangles. So we're going to start at zero. We're going to increase to 30 because that's the next lowest angle. So that'll be this finger right here. This is our 30 degree finger. The next highest would be 45, so that'll be our middle finger. After that, we have 60, so that'll be this finger. And the last one is 90, so we'll say that that's this finger. Now, the way this process works is if you're trying to find the sine of 45, you take your 45 finger, which you remember is your middle finger, and you put it down. From here, you're going to count the number of fingers to the left of that finger that are still standing. So you can see I've got two. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the square root of that number of fingers. So for us, we have root two. So let me just place that right here for now. So we're going to remember that we have root two. Now to get the denominator, what we're going to do is take that root two and just divide by two. So we'll have root two over two. Now when we go to check our answer, we'll see that the sine of 45, if we look at 45, should be opposite over hypotenuse, which should be one over root two. But we got root two over two. Now if you've been studying trigonometry, you might know that root two over two is actually the same thing as one over root two. And I'm not going to go into a long, crazy proof of why, but if you took this expression and multiplied by root two over root two, you'd actually end up with root two over two. So these are actually the same thing, and we've just proven that this process works. So let's try another one. Let's say you wanted to find the sine of 30 degrees this time. So what we'll do is we'll take our hand and we'll put down our 30 degree finger. This was zero, this is 30. So we put down 30 and we count the number of fingers to the left. In this case, there's one finger and we take the square root of one, which is just gonna be one. And you'll remember that we divide that by two and that should be the sine of 30 degrees. And we can check that on our triangle. We look for the triangle with 30. We say opposite is one, hypotenuse is two. Sure enough, sine of 30 is one over two. So for the sine of any of these special angles, all you have to do is put down the finger that corresponds to the angle you're interested in and count the number of fingers to the left, take the square root and divide by two. Now that's how it works for sine, but what about cos? Let's say you want to find the cos of 30 degrees. Let's look at the cos of 30 degrees. Okay, so the process is going to work exactly the same, but instead of looking to the left, you're actually going to look to the right. So remember we had zero, we have 30. We're going to put that finger down. There are three fingers to the right. And remember, we're going to take the square root of the number of fingers to the right. So that's the square root of three. And we're going to divide by two. Okay, so we should be able to look at our triangle and check, did we get the correct value for the cos of 30? Well, if we look at 30, the adjacent or hypotenuse would be root three over two. Sure enough, this works as well. So same process as for sine, except you're going to look to the right instead of the left. Now, if you're still with me, you probably think there's no way this is going to work for the tan ratio. And sure enough, you still can use this trick for the tan ratio. Let's say you wanted to find the tan, let's say the tan of 60 degrees. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our same hand. We're going to count over to 60 degrees, which should be this finger right here. And we're going to put that finger down. We're going to count the number of fingers to the left and take the square root. So in this case, that's going to be the square root of three. And instead of dividing by two, 
we're going to divide by the square root of the number of fingers to the right, which in this case is 1. So the square root of 1 we know is just 1. And in this case, we're going to say that the tan of 60 is just the square root of 3. So did that work? Well, let's go to our triangle. Remember, tan is opposite over adjacent. So we take a look at 60. We say the opposite is root 3. The adjacent's 1. Sure enough, tan of 60 is root 3. And this trick should work for any of these angles for sine, cos, and tan. Sure, you might find it a little bit random and maybe even hard to remember the rules, but with enough practice, if you're like a hands-on learner, this is a really great strategy to help you find exact values of trigonometric expressions without using these really scary, hard to remember, intimidating special triangles.